Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is September 10th, 2021. The time is 420. And I am joining <laughs> I am joined here by lovely chats. <laughs> Did you know about the critically acclaimed Final Fantasy 14? <laughs> <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> all right, all right, serious, serious, all right, serious. Did YouTube know? Did they restart the news? Take you know? Fuck that! Fuck that! Oh, but I cursed in the first minute. I can't put ads on it now. Shit! All right, now we'll keep going. We're good. We're good. <laughs> all right. So yes, news today. Uh, we got uh, we got Apple coming up in a little bit. That dropped just a little while ago. Uh, so put on your put on your lawyer caps because we're gonna need them because this stuff just dropped and there's uh, there's a lot to sift through. We're just gonna make up laws and shit that we pretend to understand and then we'll just say that's what happened and just go from there once we get to that point. But first, something you may have missed over this past week. Is that PAX West happened? PAX West happened. And there was not really a whole lot of people there. I can't imagine why. I can't imagine. I can't. God, why would there not be a lot of people there? So typically attendance for this is in the tens of thousands, right? Big AAA companies uh, set up and there's loud music and there's fucking all kinds of fucking laser beams everywhere, like all kinds of stuff. Right? That's typically the, the, the setup when you go to PAX. Any PAX, right? Except for PAX South, uh, back when they used to have that. Um, oh, well, even now, right? Is the PAX South San Antonio, is that still happening? Or did they stop doing that, right? Like two years ago or something? Um, anyway, so, yeah, COVID-19 uh, is obviously putting a little bit of a damper on people's attendance, company's attendance. Uh, but the price still remained the same from what I was told. Um, so... <clears throat> Some people said they actually kind of liked it. They kind of liked it. They kind of liked that it was a smaller, it was a smaller, cozier setup. Uh, have not in two years. Okay, that's what I figured. It's, it's something like that. Because I, I think I was at the, one of the last ones. Um, and, and we do have some some pictures from the floor, uh, courtesy of. Um, let me see. Here we go. Packs. This is, these are real pictures, right? I don't know what the purpose of a ball pit in the middle of the floor is, but this is this is. I wonder if they had a ball pit. Yeah. <laughs> I find this amusing, given that even before the pandemic, is that for, not for pack? Oh, is it okay? Yeah, okay. It's not. Shit. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> <laughs> because I believed it. I believed it because when you look at the actual video from the floor, and I know this is real, right? Like it's 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 about what you'd expect. It's about what you'd this expect. Is this is the main hall. The only Ben Dynam goes back there. Is that from TumblrCon? So yeah, look. <laughs> so forgive me, but it looked like it fit right in. Yeah, it's it's pretty um it's pretty empty. It's pretty empty uh, for for a PAX. Uh, and price point wise, yeah, like I heard it's still, you know, still still pay the same, but people were in mass, so attendance or sorry, sorry, some mass and usage was up. Shh, I'm the host. Uh, so your mass usage was up. It's mostly they said mostly what you got here was uh, was merchandise, like merchandising and merchandise uh, selling um uh, booths and of course it's the play area and everything which I don't know why that's there but it's cool um, not a ton of people showed up so you know, I think it kind of worked out for everybody involved at least people shouldn't have to uh, wouldn't have to run out of free shit yeah exactly um, a model train convention gets more people well I mean to, uh, it's not like people don't want to go to PAX you know it's just that right now it's just not a good idea uh, to go to PAX but you can still go. Smell not bad, I hear. 
<laughs> yeah, I haven't heard anything about any kind of breakouts or anything that happened here or anything like that. I mean, we're not really hearing a whole lot of stories about uh, super spreader events or anything like that. Maybe because COVID is so saturated now that it's impossible to tell whether whether it's a spreader event or if it's just, oh, that's just kind of the way it is here. It's just everybody just has it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that was right. A football game. That's right. It's a college football opened up. Millions and millions of people. I mean, not really, but this is pretend. Millions of people shoulder to shoulder watching football, yelling and screaming for their favorite teams. Yeah, we probably won't hear anything about any kind of uh, uh, spread that occurred at those uh, at those events. All the state and county mass mandates help. Yeah. Um. Uh, also at PAX was John Gibson. Now, you may not recognize John Gibson by name, but you will recognize John Gibson by his actions. John Gibson is the Tripwire CEO. <clears throat> and he decided while visiting PAX that he was going to make a statement, make a pretty controversial statement on Twitter, he says, proud of the U.S. Supreme Court affirming the Texas law banning abortion for babies with a heartbeat. As an entertainer, I don't get political often, yet with so many vocal peers on the other side of this issue, I felt it was important to go on the record as a pro-life game developer. So. <sighs> so first, let me say, I don't agree with his standpoint at all. Um, I, I agree that he has, he has a right to his beliefs and he could share those beliefs if he chooses to. However, you, he might have to deal with the consequences to those choices also. And boy, do the consequences just start racking up after saying this. Holy shit. Holy shit. So if you're not familiar, especially for those of you guys at EU, the uh, U.S. Supreme Court failed to stop a, uh, I believe, a law from being passed or a bill from being passed. I'm not sure exactly how it works. Um, I'm not a Congress person, nor do I, nor do I remember the song about bills. Uh, but basically, they failed to stop uh, a law going into place that would prohibit uh, women from getting or anyone with a uterus from getting an abortion uh, before six weeks. Now, <clears throat> some of you may know women few of you may actually be women you probably have heard stories about how their menstruation cycle is not always the most reliable you know like maybe one day during the month they decided wow man these wasabi peas are really good i think i'm eat all these wasabi peas right now and i'm watch uh super troopers and get high and guess what one week late for no reason for no reason. Just, just because I had wasabi peas. I didn't know those thing. <laughs> it's not, it's, it's kind, it's like for some, it's kind of on a schedule. And then some, it's just a crap shoot. You know, it's just a crap shoot, you know? Uh, and so when we talk about when you kind of know you're pregnant, it's typically when you miss your period, right? Two weeks a two week window for missing your period when it could just be late because you had maybe two days of wasabi peas is just like kind of a small window. It says, uh, Rhoda, our resident woman, says, <laughs> sorry, Rhoda, our resident, re resident uterus holder, uh, says, <laughs> crap shoot, another thing that happens during menstruation. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> See? <laughs> oh, damn, Rona. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, this is a pretty shit take. This is a pretty shit take, okay? <laughs> like, kind of a shit take on a law that is kind of shit. Kind of shit. But it's okay because the governor of Texas, Abbott, he says, listen... Here's how we're going to stop this from happening. We're going to arrest all the rapists. All right? 
I understand this is a whole new thing for some of y'all, but this whole time we've been letting rapists just run around and fucking rape. But now we're going to do something about it. <laughs> uh, oh, the other part of the law, that's right. The bounty shit. I didn't even mention it. Yeah. The whole abortion bounty thing. $10,000 for reporting somebody, whatever. Like I I'm sure there's some like fine print there that's being misconstrued by the media or whatever. Uh, all that matters is that six week is bullshit. Uh, <laughs> it's a hundred percent fucking bullshit. Um, in general, in general, you mean, you know, kind of none of your fucking business what a woman does with her body but you know um pretty bad take all right so minority report just got green lit exactly appreciate the neutrality i mean i don't i've i've said it before i firmly believe that like if someone wants to do something to their body let them fucking do it it doesn't bother you it doesn't bother you it's not gonna hurt you abortions are contagious <laughs> come on so Obviously, this blew up. It's fucking everywhere. Comments. Uh, I mean, just comments through the fucking... Yeah, people are really upset. Uh, yeah, don't get one. Don't get one. Yeah, exactly. Don't want your girlfriend to get an abortion? Tie balls up. Just tie them up. Takes two seconds. Just take them. Take your balls and just give them a twirl. Just, just grab them. Grab them. Just, give them a good couple twists. You don't have to worry about getting anyone, getting anyone pregnant. <laughs> So, obviously, it was picked up by everyone. The old dick twist. That's right. <laughs> it's painful to think about that, right? It's painful. It really is. <laughs> I, mean, I was, it was described as, as, as a youngin, it was described to me as like two Hershey's you grab by the, by the little banners and then you just twist them. Yeah, that was painful. Painful. Uh, so, yeah, Jason Schreier picked it up. And it says, uh, the president of Tripwire Interactive, publisher of this year's popular game Chivalry 2, speaks out in favor of a recent Texas law that bans abortions after six weeks and offers a $10,000 bounty to any citizen who sues someone performing abortions or assisting with the process. Um, so, you know, once the once the news people pick it up, it kind it kind of is like it's kind of just just gone, right? Uh, it's kind of wildfire. Somebody decided to dig. Because when you're that person for the day on the internet, people are going to fucking dig. So you don't want to be that person. And he was. John Gibson was that person. So this the guy, this guy had a whole thread. He's kind of going through and just like digging into this thing. And he says, uh, he says, okay, so in like five minutes of research, it's become clear that Tripwire president John Gibson put his own Christian metal band in Killing Floor 2, including the song Disunion, Reconstructed, which features these lyrics. Who gives a shit about politics? I like to share a thing or two about heretics. You see, evil inf infiltrated our government, and it wears a it wears a masquerading of sentiment. Conquer to control the people. What is the first thing you do? Guns. Please take them away so they can't resist you. Who took God out of the news? Took the people out of God? Took all the rights away? I forgot to tell you that you can't pray at school. I hope that you will know that you can, you can pray after school, and please don't mention Christ on the job. Wonder why I'm feeling like I've been robbed. Now when people push until they break, rip children from the wound before they had a, ch had a chance to see that they're alive, look into their unborn eyes. Maybe that's part of the hook or something like that. Look into the unborn eyes! Jesus Christ. <sighs> He's so salty. So yeah, this is, they're just lyrics from one of the songs he wrote. So, I mean, this is not like a new thing, you know? It's not like a new thing. Like he's, he's, he's invested. He's invested to this, into this mindset, right? So, um, that's about as anti-metal as you could get. <laughs> I can't pray at school! <laughs> So, Shipwright Studios and a couple others, we'll go over these in a second. Shipwright Studios says, while your politics are your own, the moments, uh, by the way, published by, by Tripwire, uh, the moment you make them a matter of public discourse, you entangle all of those working um, for and with you. Uh, we have worked very closely alongside the talented and passionate developers of Tripwire and your partners for the last three years. We know it is difficult for employees to speak up or act out in these scenarios, and they may not, they may not feel comfortable to speak their minds. It is regrettable, but we feel it would be doing ourselves, your employees, your partners, and the industry as a whole a disservice to allow this pattern to continue without comment. We started Shipwright with the idea that it was finally time to put our money where our mouth is. Uh, we cannot in good conscience continue to work with Tripwire under the current leadership structure. We will begin the cancellation of our existing contracts effectively immediately and this is like a tweet that they replied 
they replied to John Gibson. Um, so he took across his tongue. This dude is slow. Oh, God. <laughs> Can I play this song without DMC? <laughs> no, I, no, it's a soundtrack song, actually. Um, so it's probably like a game soundtrack. So it shouldn't be DMC8. Then people wouldn't be able to play the fucking game online or on stream. <clears throat> uh, also, Torn Banner, I, think, I believe it's Chivalry Dev, right? Um, yeah, chivalry. Uh, they say, we do not share the opinion expressed in a recent tweet by the president of Twi Tripwire, publisher of Chivalry 2. This perspective is not shared by our team, nor is it reflected in the games we create. The statement stands in opposition to what we believe about women's rights. Um, so, a lot of... Uh, Companies are very quick to just jump out. This is 7:23 p.m. This other this other tweet was 1:07 uh, uh, p.m. Um, this what? Wait, when was this put out? Let me see. 1:04 p.m. No, hold on a second. This is September 5th. Okay, this is the next day. I was like, there's no way they got that in three minutes. Um, so yeah, they're they companies are, are immediately um, coming out. They're saying no, 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 no. <laughs> they don't want to get involved. Yeah, three, three. What a co-post. Oh, he probably said, I'm proud of you or something. I yeah, respect you guys have been in a terrible position. Thanks for making your position clear. Um, so, <clears throat> companies got canceled at PNG ready. <laughs> just got to face the text and change the names. <laughs> so, uh, that was, uh, what was it, September 4th? He put that original one around, right? September 5th or something. So, it, it, it took took a, a couple days but he came back and he had this statement here uh, and this is also from john john gibson says he says my first statement regarding the events of the past few days this is his first and only statement by the way it's september 10th right now so it says by now you've all heard of my exit oh well you know what actually let's go let's go let's reverse this a little bit i missed a uh, a tweet here so oh uh do i not have it oh there it is okay i'm overlooking it Stream riotous. So, uh, <clears throat> Tripwire, um, what's his comment is six weeks old is it too late to retract it? Damn. Uh, so, Tripwire comes out and they say they appoint a new interim CEO, Alan Wilson, as company moves forward. So, the company comments given by John Gibson are his own opinion, do not reflect those of Tripwire Interactive as a company. His comments are disregard the val disregarded the values of our whole team, our partners, and much of our broader community, our leadership team. Blah, blah, blah. So it's effective immediately. John Gibson has stepped down as CEO of Tripwire Interactive, co-founding member and current vice president. Um, Alan Wilson will take uh, over as interim CEO. Alan has been with the company since its formation. And then it says his understanding of both the company's culture and the creative vision of our games will carry th uh, the team through this transition with full support from either uh, from other Tripwire leaders. So this reads as if he's like just stepping down. Not not this, like he's not the CEO anymore, but because he's still a founder and because he still probably owns a good chunk of shares um, in the company, right? It not it doesn't be publicly traded for you to still like own a chunk of a company, right? Um, <clears throat> push down the steps. He's pushed down a step. Uh, it sounds like he's still he's still on board. He's just just not any official capacity um holding any kind of title we don't know what it is yet it's been pretty you know um the ceos don't get fired they, they just get removed uh so then he says he says by now you've heard of my exit as ceo of tripwire interactive to the many fans uh friends and peers across the belief spectrum that have reached out and offer care and support thank you it means more than you can imagine for those upset about my exit i encourage you to continue your support of tripwire and their many amazing partners and it says all this stuff they're great people uh, it has been one of my greatest pleasures of life to serve the uh, and lead the excellent team of tripwire uh yet as uh, yet a team is more than just a leader and then he goes on to talk about mostly it's very neutral very um you know just just the, the team was great. They're great. I'm stepping down. And that's kind of it. He doesn't say, he doesn't retract any statements. He doesn't uh, add to the statements. Uh, like he doesn't double down. He just, he just glosses over that and just says, you know, tripwire is great. I'm going to step out. And that's it. Um, <clears throat> so Nighthand that made that text. Oh, we don't know. You know, we don't know. Yeah, it, it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. So, uh, so the comments in general are, are kind of like supportive of it. Uh, not necessarily supportive of him leaving, uh, although there are some of those too. Uh, but just like um, supporting him for standing up for himself. Right? Do you understand? Like saying that. And, and, and because, I mean, it's true. There are people that support that. That support what he believes in. And so the there's a lot of that here. You don't deserve any of this crap cancel you know cancel culture all that stuff um 
And is, is it cancel culture? Uh, you know, my notes, here's what I wrote in my notes. I said, Twip, Tripwire CEO goes on record and discovers capitalism, right? Once you make a stance where you are like putting an immediate uh, and possibly detrimental um, uh, hamper on your income, you're now, you're, you're now uh, uh, a risk for the company. So capitalism dictates <laughs> that if you want to continue making money, you get rid of what's holding you back. Um, CEOs are representative of the brand. You can't be yourself. I talked, so I talked to a friend of mine who is like been CEO for a couple companies. And he, he, the first thing he said was, why the fuck would a CEO do this unless he's also a founder? And it's like, okay, well that makes sense. It's like, because yeah, like, like you said, CEO is the representative of the brand. So they can't, they can't, you can't make sweeping controversial generalizations about his company saying that you know this pro game where this is the stance that this that our game studio or whatever he said uh is are taking <clears throat> don't make your opinions come public <laughs> so i noticed i was like I went to his page and I was like, I must be on the wrong site. Like this must not be his. This is this is the wrong place uh, because I don't remember all that. Look at this. Look, it says it says currently full time philanthropists continue to help poor and underprivileged of the world, including orphans and widows. Right. And I was like, I don't remember saying that. And I went to a web archive to pull up the original. Uh, and it's like, oh, yeah, that looks that's what it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> so it's quite it's quite the shift and you know frankly he did have to change his banner so you know i could see why he's uh well why he changed the banner and all that stuff i just thought it was an interesting pick you know it's a kind of interesting pick look at me i'm i'm, I'm philanthropist <laughs> brand man yeah exactly <laughs> just an interesting interesting choice of banner <laughs> so so John Gibson's out. You could call it cancel culture. You could call it making poor, poor uh, brand decisions. Uh, you call it whatever you want, but you gotta know better, man. You gotta know better. You know the fact that he was at PAX and he was tweeting about being at PAX. Uh, it, the first thing I thought when I saw that, I was like, "Oh my god, this guy's drunk," because typically when you go to a convention, you're drunk, like. 12 to 15 hours a day, especially if you have a lot of meetings, you're just constantly drinking, just constantly drinking with whoever you're meeting with. And then you have another meeting and you have another beer. And so it made me think it's like, maybe he's just drunk and he just like thought, yeah, I'm a fucking, if he, I'm sure he believes it obviously, but like maybe he thought it'd be smart to just like tweet it out. And it wasn't. <clears throat> you're doing meetings wrong. No, dude, that's, that's what drunken buzz on cafe yeah no ga gaming meetings it always takes place at like a bar or a restaurant and it's always like hey you want to go to beer or something like i'll go to your beer it's, it's, yeah it's 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 constant drinking it's a lot of drinking drunk tweets don't cover no, i'm not saying it's an excuse i'm just saying like that's that's where you got up the the intestinal fortitude be like you know what i'm gonna comment on this highly controversial issue on twitter and take a firm stance. That sounds like a smart thing for a CEO to do. Mm. <clears throat> Speaking of not smart things for CEOs to do, but also smart things for CEOs to do. You remember we talked about remember we talked about Apple versus Epic? We had like a whole, I think they got a whole episode on it, right? We had like a whole episode uh, on um, on Apple versus Epic. So what happened was, let's go quick recap. One day, Epic woke up and chose violence. They released a way that you could purchase their uh, their real money currency, their virtual currency, uh, through iOS, the iOS version of Fortnite in the app, bypassing the iOS store's payment processor. So you could buy V-Bucks inside the game without going through Apple. Now that is a big, 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 big no-no according to Apple's policies. 
right? So Apple was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, they're, what the fuck? <laughs> the audacity of this bitch. And they took down Fortnite. I think they even like threatened to take down a bunch of other like like epic games or something or a bunch of other basically everything. Yeah. What the bruh? Yeah, bruh, bruh. Sorry, bruh. Uh so they took down they took down Fortnite fucking quick. And it was almost immediately, almost immediately, uh Fortnite really or Epic releases this uh 1984 Apple parody commercial uh where they took on where they basically try and paint Apple as this authoritarian uh, company that has a monopoly on all this stuff and is keeping everybody down, all this stuff, right? And so <clears throat> they released this. It's kind of like a little, little, little jab or whatever. And at the same time, also, also released a uh, uh, notice that they has filed suit against Apple. All right. So here it says. It says Epic Games has defied the App Store monopoly. In retaliation, Apple is blocking Fortnite from a billion devices. Join the fight to stop 2020 from becoming 1984. Free Fortnite. Pretty obvious jab. Pretty obvious jab. If you haven't seen the original, I'm sure it's here somewhere. There we go. Someone has the side by side here. Right? Is that what this is? Yeah, so it's the same thing. What you do? The guy's talking the thing. Here comes somebody with a big ass hammer. Runs over, throws it at him, frees them from tyranny. Freeze them. And so they thought they're, oh, you might as well, the money shot, right? Whoa. And then it's on January 24th. Apple computer will introduce Macintosh. And you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. Oh, that's so corny. That's so corny. Um, the hammer toss form was exquisite. Oh, wow. A billion devices. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My beer splashed back into my nose. Um, so, <clears throat> so we got a ruling today that says that um, both sides won and both sides lost. Nine out of ten, Apple won. But the one that they lost is pretty de detrimental. So they won 9 out of 10 counts, but they were found to engage in anti-competitive conduct under California law and will be forced to change its app store policies and loosen its grip over in-app purchases. And the injunction will come into effect in December. So what that means is by December, Apple should allow people to allow apps developers to use their own payment processors. Now... You know that's not going to happen. Apple will spend a billion dollars to prevent themselves from losing the billions of dollars that they will uh, obviously lose if they allow this to happen. So there's there's some pros and cons here, right? It's like, on one hand, it's like, yeah, we finally get to open up iOS, for at the very least, for payment processors, right? But, but then on the flip side, it's like now... If you want to play a game on, on uh, uh, or not now, but in the future, if you want to play a game, you might have to go through a payment processor that goes through who knows what other company. Um, <clears throat> so what is that new iPhone coming soon? Apple will throw more money than the US GDP at this. Oh, yeah. They're going to fight this harder than anything ever, ever. Okay. So there's a lot of quotes here. I'll just start here and I'll try to like zip through some of them. This is from the judge. So she says, while the court finds Apple enjoys a considerable market share of over 55% and extraordinarily high profit margins, margins, these factors alone do not show antitrust conduct. Success is not illegal. One of the things that Epic was trying to prove was that Apple was... Um, they are they that they are a monopolistic company, uh, and that their uh, their over success was basically showing that they that there was no other option nowhere else to go for some of these developers. Uh, it says the final trial record did not include evidence uh, of other critical factors such as barriers to entry and conduct decreasing output and decreasing innovation in the relevant market. So the court does not find that it is impossible. Only that Epic Games fail in its burden to demonstrate Apple is an illegal monopolist. So Epic did not provide enough data to prove 
that Apple was is a monopoly. And so, <clears throat> so it says, and this is the part where they this is the part where they lost. It says, nonetheless, the trial did show that Apple is engaging in anti-competitive conduct under California's competition laws. The court concludes that Apple's anti-steering provisions hide critical information from consumers and illegally stifle consumer choice. When coupled with Apple's incipient antitrust violations, these anti-steering provisions are anti-competitive and a nationwide remedy to eliminate these provisions is warranted. So, I am not a lawyer, but that sounds a lot of... That sounds a lot like they're saying you can't keep people from using other services on your platform, like payment processes, for example. Uh, no mention of Steam in this. Yeah, no, no mention of Steam. I mean, there are still other suits that are going on. This is just the one between Apple and Epic. Um, that's a lot of anti shit. <laughs> it's a lot. It is a lot. Um, let me see. See. Da -da 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 -da. However, it should define Apple's policies have at least resulted in increased prices for developers, noting that the competition from the Epic Games Store and the PC space spurred Steam and Microsoft to lower their lower their own commission rates uh, shortly after. We talked about that a number of times. Epic's buying up all these games. They're offering uh, a, a better cut for developers, and they're forcing because Steam and Microsoft have a mono not a monopoly, but they pretty much do um, in uh, in the PC gaming space. So it says, and while Apple argued that other mobile app stores and consoles have a thirty percent commission as standard, the judge said that those are frequently negotiated downward. She cited the sealed em sealed envelope because remember, there's a ton of evidence that they pulled out from Steam and from all these other places, all this data. Um, this is a uh, sealed evidence in the case uh, as confirming that console makers cut breaks for large developers. Something that we knew. Something we knew, but we didn't really know, right? Epic is barging into the space by offering free games. That's right. Android is very, very similar to this. Except for Android, you can get, I mean, there's like the Amazon App Store. There's Google Play Store. There's like, the Samsung App Store. Like, there are so many different ways you get app. And then you can sideload without jailbreaking your shit so android has like the ultimate flexibility that's something i love about android it's like if i if i could download any apk and at least try to install it on my on my uh, uh on my tablet or on my phone or whatever like yeah sure let's see if it breaks the phone whose fault is that it's my fault you don't have that option with apple uh with apple you have to jailbreak it, which you risk breaking. <laughs> and I think you can't even do that anymore because all the apps need to be signed, period. So, so Apple is highly restrictive. Um, it says... It says here that one of the reasons, in light of Apple's high profit margins in the Apple Store, a third-party store could likely provide game distribution at a lower commission and thereby either drive down prices or increase developer profits, the judge said. The court must reserve on whether Apple's restrictions have increased prices for consumers as evidence is mixed. And so it says she also agreed with Epic that Apple's restrictions have held back innovation in the field. So it says Apple conducted developer surveys in 2010 and 2017. Comparing the two indicates that Apple is not moving quickly to address developer concerns or dedicating enough resources or sufficient resources to their issues. Innovators do not rest on laurels. Woo! <laughs> so she's saying that they're, by their own studies, by their own surveys... Apple's own surveys, they're being told that they're not innovating enough. And it's because there's no competition. Now, we know this to be true. Once once you're the only person in the market, you do whatever you want. Yeah, you do whatever, right? You could, you could slack a little bit and not have to worry about it. World of Warcraft suffered from that. World of Warcraft would go fucking a year plus with no content, with nothing new. But they were the biggest for so long. They don't have to worry about it. Or they didn't have to worry about it. Obviously, now we have issues. But they... Steam. Yes, yeah, Steam. Yes. Yeah, I mean, even Steam is getting kind of stagnant. They're trying to do... They're trying to do stuff. Um, so anyways, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot here. There's a lot here. Well, obviously, we got response here. Um, let me scroll down here. Let me see. So Tim Sweeney responds. Uh, first, we'll read the response here for Apple's response. It says, Today, the court has affirmed what we've known all along. The App Store is not in violation of antitrust law. As the court recognized, success is not illegal. Apple faces rigorous competition in every segment in which we do business, and we believe customers and developers choose us because our products and services are the best in the world. We remain committed to ensuring the App Store is a safe and trusted marketplace that supports a thriving developer community and more than 2.1 million U.S. jobs, and where the rules apply equally to everyone. Steam's video bad. Steam's social stuff is so fucking bad. So, um, Epic 
T Tim says, today's ruling isn't a win for developers or for consumers. Epic is fighting for fair competition among in-app payment methods and app stores for a billion consumers. So, so in light of this, in light of this, uh, Apple stock took a little bit of a tumble today. Uh, a pr pretty good tumble. As a matter of fact, let's see how far back. We're talking about, uh, about a month here. So August 27th, so not even a month. Shit is like a little over a week. Um, they're they're back down. They lost about a week's worth of gain. All of this, all of this is build up hype for uh, iPhone because we got the announcement, right? We knew the announcement was coming. Announcement came, build up, build up, and then it dipped back down. I am sure all in the end. Um, how much is this a ten set thing? Not than than just Epic. Oh, it's mostly an Epic thing. Uh, Tim's gone on the record a number of times saying uh, saying that he is the majority owner um of uh of, of epic but um i don't think this has anything to do with tencent this this in this case <laughs> so shout out top uh so yeah apple stock took a little bit of a tumble i'm pretty sure it'll probably just you know just bounce back you know next week or something we'll have to keep an eye on it just to see but um but yeah it's been uh it's 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 been it's been an interesting day for mobile gaming because or just mobile apps in general like this is not just a ruling that's going to impact uh games like this is going to impact all apps period so they have until december to uh to find a way to stop it and again i assure you they will apple will find a way to make themselves to, to prevent them from losing a fuck ton of money um so maybe Apple will be worth developing for now, so not the thirty percent murder. I mean, it's it's the platform, man. It's the platform. That's what we want to get on. Is GTA Five the new Skyrim? Fuck you guys. <laughs> Release GTA Six. Did somebody did somebody tag Tim Sweeney on that? <laughs> right. Let me see. I'm sure somebody in there is GTA. GTA. Oh, okay. No. Okay. I'm sure somebody bugged him for it. He'll be like, "What the fuck? What?" <laughs> a top, a top. All right. Um, YouTube gaming has been um, recruiting lately. You guys notice that? <sighs> Dr. Lupo. Twitch tried to make him like the face of Twitch, but that didn't really pan out. Um, we have Tim the Tatman, who helped the Cowboys lose yesterday, and also is going to uh, to YouTube. Um, <laughs> Mike's Mike's move announcement now. No. <laughs> Did you guys see that ESPN actually fucking like posted? <laughs> Cause he tweeted out, he's like, "Oh, I feel good. Cowboys gonna win all this stuff or whatever," and, and they fucking lost. And so, <laughs> and so like ESPN's like Tim the Tatman cursed us. That's oh, so good. Uh, Mike, we go. Am I going to YouTube? What the fuck? I'm never on YouTube. We talking about? <laughs> so Tim the Tatman. He's going. And he's a big streamer. He's known. We all know Tim the Tatman, I think. Uh, we also have this clip with uh, Ludwig, another popular streamer on Twitch. And here's what he said. YouTube, exclusively. Uh -huh. Which, which, I will say, there's going to be a bunch more people soon. Why? Darn. I can't leak. Oh! But a bunch more people. <laughs> I don't know what that Christ. was. I don't know if he's just That excited. was my whole shit alarm. Yeah. Well, Ludwig's got secret info. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. I do have some secret info that I can't reveal too much, but I, I think a lot of streamers are going to leave Twitch for YouTube. Oh! Why is that, I, there's no new that's info. That's crazy. Why are you doing that? That's crazy Quizzes, to do that. Uh, <laughs> he just signed with YouTube exclusively. Uh-huh. Which, which... So... Which... So Ludwig's saying that there's going to be more. It's going to be Shroud again. <laughs> you stole my jokes! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
But yeah, there's as Miguel was talking about it, and he wasn't even talking about payday. Just that it would be uh, probably the best thing to do. There's a bunch of people that are talking about making the switch to YouTube. Um, Shaw probably locked into Twitch with a fat fucking chain this time. Yeah, probably they they were smart. So a couple years ago, um, I wish I had the articles on this because I just remembered this. But a couple years ago. Um, Twitch had made, uh, they put down a lot of contra- bunch of contracts for people, like two year contracts for a bunch of streamers. And apparently those contracts are coming up and YouTube knows. So YouTube has been basically right on top of it and, uh, and, and sniping what they can. So it's probably going to be more. Come, Adam said, his, Asman said he wouldn't move unless they paid him mega cash. They probably have to offer, uh, Asman like 10, 15 million for him to go. I mean, you. I mean, YouTube can afford it, you know? They're just gonna they're just throw money at it. They never made money anyways. Why not just fucking throw more money at the thing? So, <clears throat> of course, 20 mil, you think, Asma said? Yeah, fuck. Well, it's that plus all the hate rays, you think? So, of course, Soldier Boy. You! 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 you. Soldier Boy! He had some comments to make about this. We're gonna mute the first part here because he's playing some songs. First rapper to show a Lambo truck live on Twitch sitting outside his house. Stop playing with me, I'm the richest nigga on Twitch. All them niggas left y'all to go to YouTube gaming for a check. They 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 sold it, they sold out for clout. I do that. I never leave. I never leave for the clout. I am clout. No money, I don't need shit. I never leave Twitch. You niggas sold out for a check. You niggas ain't you. <laughs> they sold out. They sold out for a check. And soldiers got the first Lambo truck ever shown on Twitch. He might be right. But don't worry, he's never going to leave. Soldier's never going to leave, you guys. Don't worry, it's okay. Soldier's never going to leave. He doesn't need money. He doesn't need clout. He is clout. First Lambo truck I've ever seen on Twitch. Stand up on my chair and was fall over. Look at my shoes. Flex on you guys. Look at my pants. Soldier pants. <laughs> Look at my laces. Soldier laces. <laughs> He's waiting for that Twitch console deal. <laughs> is it, isn't the point of being a streamer going for the bigger check on a different platform? Not nah, Soldier. Nah, nah, nah. He's committed. Committed to us. Soldier owned Nintendo. He owns Atari. He owns Atari. Not Nintendo. He owns, he owns Atari. <laughs> Do we need to chill out? He's, hey, man. He's, he's, he's. he's Overflowing with uh, <laughs> love and admiration for the platform. Come on, come on, drugs. <laughs> He's a goddamn CEO of Atari. That's right. Bullshit. Overflowing with bullshit. Yeah, exactly. Dude, get out. He'll fucking he'd leave Twitch for a dollar. Remember that commercial? I got a dollar. He'll be like, hell yeah, I leave Twitch. Fuck Twitch. I am YouTube. <laughs> I am YouTube. Stands up on chair. First Lambo. First Lambo truck ever seen on YouTube. So speaking of Twitch, Twitch sues users over alleged hate raids against streamers. So they actually filed a lawsuit against a couple of people. We are targeting black and LGBTQIA plus members of the community. This was something we covered it last year, last year, last week. Um, there's hate raids going on where like and we saw we watched videos of it happening J just uh obviously some grotesque and terrible shit and twitch very quick on this one uh jumped on it and they actually dug up the users and they've now filed a suit against them we don't really know much of anything else it was filed u.s district court in northern district of california targets two users identified only as cruise control and creatine overdose whom Twitch believes are based respectively in the Netherlands 
and Austria. Twitch in the suit says initially took swift action by suspending them and permanently banning their accounts. However, it reads they evaded Twitch bans by creating new alternate Twitch accounts and continually altering their self-described hate raid code to avoid detection and suspension by Twitch. So... It says Twitch alleges that Cruise Control is responsible for about 3,000 bots associated with the recent hate raids. Dang! Good luck because they end other countries. Yeah, that's going to be rough, but we'll see. Uh, suing users worked so well for the RAA. I mean, ultimately it did. Fuck, it took away my fucking Napster, bitches. Creatine. I've got creatine in my pre-workout drinks. That's right. But are you, are you creatine overdose levels of... I don't know. <laughs> Levels of enthusiastic about creating 3,000 fucking bots. Naps are bad. She sounds like a pair of great gentlemen. That's right. That's right. So uh, we won't know much of any anything that happens from this probably fucking ever because one, two different countries, uh, and two, uh, it is... Um, well, it's going to take a while for this to actually get anywhere. They're quick to file... Because they have the information on hand. Uh, if anything, it might just at least stop them from doing it. Especially if they were some of the main contributors to the hate raid um, uh, uh, fiasco that happened. Epidemic, whatever you want to call it. So, if this at least stops them, then hey. I mean, it's a good move. But will they be successful in suing them? Probably not. Probably not. Won't do shit until they make signing up for an account more difficult. Yeah, like we talked about last week. Once you sign up for a Twitch account one time, um, and then you go back in the same browser to create another Twitch account, it will not ask you for the are you a robot verification. Apparently, you can just do it over and over again. So, they'll just write a script that just, just keep on going. The shit thing about that is if it stops them, someone else would just take their place. It's how it works. How the word works. Yeah, it's how uh, Hail Hydra, man. You know, that's how it works. Uh, Got to beat the undead asylum in the browser every time you need to make a new new account. <laughs> Say they won't make signing up for an account difficult. You need people to sign up. Exactly. Use legal money. I mean, hate rates happen to YT streamers and Facebook streamers. At best, I believe they could just get an IP ban or something. Yeah, you would think. But they kept on altering their code, which is funny because in the video that we showed last week, like it's impossible to like to catch every every sim symbol like visual or symbolic representation of a word using you know the millions of characters available to us on the keyboard right you can't you just can't what they say it was like 76 days or something like that to like go through and just to file all the numbers uh and the number of actual words like from uh, what was it jogger he used uh as an example it was like in pff, millions or something. It's forget it, man. It's not gonna happen. So even Twitch is having a hard time keeping up with this mess. So speaking of suing, which might be an eventuality, advertising standards tell Star Citizen Dev to make it clear that for sale concept ships don't exist in the game. So I myself receive my monthly update from star citizen robert industries updates uh and there are times when yeah they'll, they'll be advertising a ship that you could buy but it's not in the game yet so you're you're buying uh a, a, a place card they'll give you they'll give you a rental you'll get a rental right get you from point a to point b in the time being but the actual ship you purchase is not in the game yet you'll get it when when it's in is that game released yet? No. Star Citizen is, Star Citizen is not released yet. Um, you mean the game that's been alpha for, for eight years? S Star Citizen was announced before the Wii U was released. Okay? I'm fairly certain that's accurate. Alright? Just, just to put it in some perspective. Okay? It's been a while. <laughs> Was it the Wii U? Right? Wii, yeah, I think it's the Wii U. Not the Wii. The Wii U. So, October 18th, 2012. I knew we'd get someone to get the dates. <laughs> There's probably kids in here who weren't born yet when Star Citizen. Well, I mean, yo, it's funny. No! 
October 18, 2012. Declan was born October 8th. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> That that man that comes walking in, right, hey, Dad? He's <laughs> as old as this game. Okay, come on. He's gonna be working on fucking staff soon. So this is a pretty interesting one because I also show the email and everything. And it, it, it you know, when you read it, it just oh, they don't have a full version here. So I'll try to read it for you guys here. Sorry, it's really small. Uh, it says uh, uh, you only have forty eight hours to grab this Zian alien ship before it leaves the pledge store Monday, July nineteenth. So act fast before it departs. But again, you can't. It's a concept ship. It's a concept ship. will be leaving the pledge store. Yeah, it's a concept ship. Um, so they've been told uh, by the, uh, oh God, what's the name of the company here? Uh, the ASA, um, which is the Advertising Standards Authority. That's right. Okay. That they need to be clearer on upcoming, in upcoming communications, what, that the, that the, the game or that the ships that you're buying are not actually in the game. This is a pretty bad step for Robert Industries, whatever the fuck his name is. Um, <laughs> this is a pretty, this is a pretty bad step in the wrong direction for those guys, uh, because robber industries. Because it's been known that this is the game that like is like taking forever to be finished and to be finished. And uh, you know there are a few people that will uh, that will come to their defense and just say, "Oh man, the, the game is available. You can go and play it right now." I'm not saying the game is not available. I'm saying it's not finished saying it's not finished it's not even it's not even like early access finish they're selling ships they're, oh fuck there's a fucking link somewhere um let me see maybe it's through regular through reddit there is a leaks a, a, a link somewhere where you could buy ships um let me see so yeah this is the guy that actually that actually submitted the report and they actually took action uh, but there's a site that shows all the different ships that they have that you could purchase um this is why Tobis always like, we shall not pre-order. Uh, and it's crazy. It's hundred, hundreds of dollars for some of these ships. Hundreds of dollars. How long has that goddamn game been in dev? It's a long time. It's a long, 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 long time. It's a long time. Here's a game that's about as old as uh, as Star Citizen. That's now getting a remake because it's that old. Have you guys seen this? Peace is a lie. <sighs> that is what the Sith believe. They promise power. Now they wield it. We face the greatest Sith in generations. They must be stopped. We'll stop it right there. So, yes. There is going to be a Knights of the Old Republic remake, which means there will probably be a KOTOR 2 remake in the future. Now, as somebody who has not, you say, revisit BF Everport, I think that's funny because I've actually never fully played KOTOR. Um, I am excited about this because now I'll play it. <laughs> I had, I had, you know, it's funny. I actually had, I think I had uh, KOTOR, well, I think one was on iOS, like on, on, on my tablet or something like that, on my iPad. Um, and I played, I played it for a while there. No, I just never completed it. I never completed it. And that's funny because I'm, I'm a big fan of that style of game, but it's just like, uh, just never got around completing it. <laughs> uh, you call yourself a gamer? I know, I don't complete all my games. I'm such a fucking failure. Uh, so yeah, KOTOR. No announcement, date, nothing like that. We know that it's being made by Asper Media. Uh, they actually tweeted out. They're very proud of this, which is good for them. Uh, this is no Jedi mind trick. We're bringing Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake to PlayStation 5 as a console exclusive launch and to PC. So we will get it. We will. We will get it. Uh, I know not a lot of you guys have PS5, but uh, you could eventually. We will eventually. It's time exclusive. We will eventually get it. Sunday's here. Sunday's say hi. Uh, yay, PC. 
It'll be free on Game Pass in a year. There we go. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, now, if you want to see some of the, I went to their website. Some of the other work that they have done, uh, their website's pretty slick. Uh, but <clears throat> Republic Commando, Civ 6, they seem to deal a lot with um, with porting things. Uh, yeah, remixing the classic. We've relaunched three Star Wars games uh, so another generation could master them all over again. So they already have a Star Wars license that they're working with doing all of this work. Um, so this is good. This is good. I mean, this this seems like it's 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 a uh, a company that um, that has at least their foot in the door already with this kind of content. Uh, Civ Six works great on Switch, by the way. I played it. Oh, there you go. Hey, there you go. It's gonna be a win. It's gonna be a win. Thank you, Nesterados. Uh The fact that it's not Xbox is kind of a downer since that's what it was released on. I, I I can't imagine that Disney's going to not want to make money, so I think that whenever it's timed release on PC, it will also be released on Xbox. I'm certain of it. Maybe PS5 gets it first, right? But if it's going to hit PC, it's going to hit Xbox. They're not going to keep a remake from, from 2008 or whatever the fuck. Um, they're not going to keep that from Xbox unless... Sony's paying out the ass, but now they're not gonna keep it. I think Disney wants that money. They want that market share. Um, is it six weeks of exclusivity? That's easy. Are you kidding me? That's like that's a good window. That's a good window, man. I, I could probably notice that I'm pregnant and get an abortion in that window if I'm lucky. Um, they were careful about their wording. It's a console launch exclusive. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So <laughs> not in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of 2000 and something, actually 1999, um, we have a new Matrix, Matrix Resurrections, stuns with its first trailer. Now, we're not going to watch the whole trailer here strictly because, I mean, this little picture in picture is fine, because I am certain it's going to get struck down. Uh... <laughs> But Matrix 4 uh, has been, has a trailer. It looks fantastic. Um, I I don't know if, if I had low expectations or like um, even expectations or what. We say bring back, bring back the green tint. So if we could talk about that for a minute. The green tint, if you remember at the end of Matrix 3, when they kind of had the meeting of the architect and the oracle, the world did not have the green tint. So it's possible that this is in that world that we saw at the end of 4, where it doesn't have the green tint. Maybe it's a blue tint. I don't know. Um, it does have a character in it that looks a lot like Lawrence Fishburne. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne's character, Morpheus. Um, but you guys should know that Morpheus technically is dead. Canon is dead. In the game Matrix Online, which the Wachowskis have already said is canon, maybe they'll backtrack on that, uh, he dies, and I'll show you how. It's quite unceremonious. That's it! That's the end of Morpheus. <laughs> that man strikes again. Uh, don't know if you caught, but there's a brief moment see with Blind Neo hooked up to a pod. Yeah, there's a lot of like freeze frame shit in there. Yes, yes. Uh, damn, that man, you can't play that and say, uh, well, that's the. I know, I know. But if you remember, there were a couple of matrix. There was a a, a matrix game uh, that came out that bridged the gap between Res uh, Revel, the second movie, and the third movie, which is also pretty good. I can't remember the name of the actual like Matrix something, the game or some shit. Uh, it was a single player RPG. Um, 
and it was really good. Like, it was really fucking cool. Uh, yeah, you play Ghost of Niobe. It was cool because you get to play... Remember, like, the, the, the infamous highway scene in the second movie where you have Niobe and all of them kind of meeting up with the main characters? You get to see where they were at and what they were doing. You follow them on their mission that was running parallel to yours. Uh, it's pretty fucking rad. And that was all canon. So we already knew from that perspective that, yeah, like, you know, the Wachowskis were okay with these games being canon. So technically, this could be the real death of Morpheus. Now, the character that they get to play um, uh, Morpheus in... Or, or sorry, get to get to play an unnamed character uh, in uh, the trailer looks a hell of a lot like possibly a young Morpheus. Thomas. Let me see. I fast forward and find it. Here we go. I mean, kind of, kind of, kind of hard to say. His love child. We don't. We don't know what's happening but just from this trailer there's been a million a million uh theories like for example at the beginning we have neil patrick harris who is wearing blue glasses Crazy. so we kind of feel like you know, maybe maybe he is there as part of the uh the system's way of keeping neo in check maybe neo is reinserted into the system and now they're keeping him check which is why he doesn't remember everything he has a lavish lifestyle kind of like cypher when he said he wanted to be someone rich like an actor in the actual trailer you could see that they're playing at some point here they're actually playing the original uh movie on a screen that he goes bursting through right and then at the end we have jonathan groff who is amazing by the way talking to him and just flat out says the name of the movie after all these years be going back to where it all started back to the matrix maybe they reinserted him into the matrix and he's a famous movie star who made the matrix movies and this is his agent his movie agent who is saying you go back to the matrix and make another movie like it's, <laughs> it could it could be. I've heard that it is very fourth wall, very like meta. But we'll see. <laughs> We're in the matrix. It's, it's it's pretty fucking meta. They always refer to the interior network as the matrix since the matrix reloaded. This theory is fucking insane, but I hope it's true. Did you know that the song they used for the trailer? I mean, I know the song. I know the song. It's I mean, it's a cover of that song, but I don't know if it's DMC8 or anything. I don't want to like you know whatever. But um, they pretty much have an open canvas, I think. Yeah, I I I I I I don't know what to expect from this. Um, I'm personally a big fan of of uh, Jonathan Groff. He was in Mindhunter. This guy, um, he was in um, he plays like Sven or something. He plays somebody in Frozen. Which is a piece, pretty good character in Frozen. Um, he also is the king, King Henry, in uh, the uh, Hamilton play, and he's amazing in that. Yeah, he's the king in uh, in Hamilton. Just absolutely, absolutely uh, incredible. So I'm hurt. He's also a kind of weird in a way. If you watch Mind Hunter, you know he's kind of got like a weird moody side to his acting that he could do so i kind of wonder what his role is going because if you look at imdb it doesn't say who he is maybe he's just his movie his acting agent right if we're getting really meta with it or maybe he plays another role i don't know maybe he's a new architect i don't know maybe he's new agent smith well he's not but i don't know he can't yeah he can do dark stuff and he's so handsome like he just delivers it in a very creepy way you know uh, I got two majors games on PS2. Looks like I got some research to do. There you go. It's White Rabbit, uh, written by Gray Slick, who joined Jefferson Airplane after meeting them in a club called The Matrix. I shit you not. Oh, why I didn't know that. <laughs> He's 100% the new architect. Oh, man. It's possible. It's possible. I wonder if that Matrix YouTuber has done a video analysis on the trailer already. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. I'm excited about this. I actually, you know, what? I showed I showed Declan the trailer for the original game. So Declan's eight years old. So we're not really sure if like, you know, violent game movies are for him. But he did watch Winter Soldier and he hasn't shot anybody yet. So we figured he's probably gonna be fine. And also everybody in, in, in the Matrix is not real. 
kind of. Okay, so we sat down, we watched the original Matrix trailer with Declan, and I was like, and I was like, and Declan's typically the kind of person who'll be like, no, I don't want to watch it because anytime we watch a movie, it means that we're we're impeding on his computer time. So typically, we're like, you want to watch this movie? He's like, nah. Right, but he thought about it for a long time, and he didn't say anything. And you know what I said? And it's corny as fuck. It's corny as fuck. Right? I said, Declan, he was sitting in my lap, looking at the TV. And he was kind of like thinking. He was kind of picking his nails, kind of thinking. I said, Declan, do you want to find out what the Matrix is? And he said, Yes. I was like, All right. And he's like, We'll watch it on Sunday. I was like, Yeah. <laughs> I felt so cool saying that though. I felt so cool saying it. Do you want to know what the Matrix is? He's all yes. I was like, all right. <laughs> Let's go. It's right. So Sunday, Sunday, we're gonna sit down. We're gonna watch the Matrix. I don't know if we're gonna get through the entire, um, <laughs> the entire uh, movie in one sitting, but God, I hope so. I hope so. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So, so that's it for the news. Animatrix. That one I might have to review again because some of those episodes are maybe a little bit too much for him. We'll see. Uh, oh, the YouTuber has already done four videos on the trailer. There's probably a lot of... Uh, oh, man. Yeah, there's, there's probably so many people dissecting the shit out of this trailer. There's so many... So much imagery. It's a really... So, first of all, I would love to play the entire trailer for you guys, but I, it's going to get struck down, right? Um, but please watch it. It's really... It's 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 very cliche. Okay? Like, for like thematically, it's a little cliche, but... It's really good. The fucking hype is out of control. Out of control. December 18th for Matrix 4. Obviously, we're going to get more trailers. Um, we're going to watch the first three. And then uh, they show too much. I don't feel like they show... I feel like what they showed in this trailer was probably like the first 20 minutes of the movie. We're doing a Matrix night in Discord sometime. Pretty please. Oh, is it, oh, is it December 22nd? Oh, is it 20... I thought, sorry, I thought it was 18th. Um... Yes, we should. Let's do it closer to the movie release. We'll do it closer to the movie release. Um, but yes, we should. I, I just I just bought it. So uh, on Amazon, as a matter of fact. So so yeah, we'll 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 uh, we'll, we'll do it. We could do a full four movie watch. Yes, exactly. Like lead up to it. I'm down. I can all watch that shit again. Hundred percent. Anyways, we gotta end it. Thank you so much, chat, for joining me. You guys are the best. Do it now. <laughs> my name is Mike BAK. Phone it is my lovely chat. Thank you so much for the spam at the beginning. I appreciate you. This is Sunday. Bye. <laughs>